Hi, welcome to the Dallas International Film Festival. I'm here with Mickey Tikoff, director of Neshoba. Thank you for coming to Dallas. It's great to have you here. It's my pleasure. Dallas has been very good to me. I did want to ask you why you chose Dallas. Neshoba has gotten so much festival recognition. 20 different festivals. You've been an official selection or a prize winner and or a prize winner. Well, actually, uh, Dallas International Film Festival picked me because in February, uh, Neshoba was at the Texas Black Film Festival mm -hmm. and it won Best Documentary and Best Overall Film, the first time a documentary was actually given that honor. And part of the prize was to be invited here. So I wanted to come back because Dallas has been great to me. <laughs> well, you've had an amazing career. You know, you've been, you're an activist yourself and this is a civil rights film. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, the, the, the film is about a small Mississippi town who kept a secret for 40 years when in 1964, three young kids, two white kids from New York and a black kid from Mississippi, went down to Mississippi. It was a program called, called Freedom Summer right. to register black voters. They were there one day when 21 armed Klansmen murdered them in cold blood, bragged about it the next day, and Mississippi did nothing about it for 40 years. And so this film starts 40 years later right. and tries to understand how this could happen, that three young men could be killed, everybody knew who did it, nobody did anything about it, but really delve into how we can really get to racial healing and reconciliation. And through our film, we say the only way to get there is to tell the truth, the, the unvarnished truth. truth. And some of that truth isn't very pretty. Uh, but we need to own that truth. We need to talk about that truth. Uh, people died. We, we, we need to know about that. And particularly for young people to understand that the price of freedom in this country was not free. Right. And although we've come a very long way, I mean, we have a black president. When I started shooting uh, Neshoba, we had no idea that was going to happen. So sure. that was really extraordinary. But until all hearts are changed, we can change laws, but until all hearts are changed, we really have work to do. And I hope this film inspires people to do that work because this group of people I follow, these 15 whites and 15 blacks, were very, very brave. And in what they did, they caused change to happen because it was as a direct result of their calling for justice that the ringleader, the mastermind of these murders, an 80-year-old Baptist preacher named Edgar A. Killen, was ultimately indicted. Right. Now, I'm curious about the process of the movie. You actually spent several months with the man himself, you know, the, the mastermind behind all this. Was he cooperative? Well, let's just say that Edgar A. Killen, for the whole time, till he was 80 years old, never gave an interview. Everybody right. knew who he was. He bragged. He opened his mouth. He, and everybody knew he was one of the most unconstructed racists imaginable. Certainly. Uh, Connie Chung used to camp out in front of his house trying to get an interview, and he would, you know, he just wouldn't do it. Right. Um, we started shooting in 2004 before he'd gotten indicted. We had no idea, actually, uh, that he was going to get indicted, but to, to paint a portrait of this place called Neshoba County, it was very important to go into all the different segments of the community. Sure. Including some segments I, we probably didn't have business to, to be in, but to paint that picture, we really had to understand that, and I actually met somebody who knew him. Wow. And I worked on this man to get an interview, get an interview, and of course it was no, 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 until he got indicted. And all of a sudden there was a minute of vulnerability because this man had gotten away with it for 40 years and not in his wildest imagination did he think that he was going to have to, you know, face the music. And I called this man Barney back up. I said, Barney, he's indicted. You know, I'm not a news person. I'm a filmmaker. And I want to tell the truth of his story. He's never told his truth. And a few hours later, I got a call from Mr. Killen's lawyer. Wow. And all of a sudden, an interview was set up in his lawyer's office. Um, I'll never forget when we drove up to that office in that picture window, and I saw him sitting in the picture window, and he was wearing this big cowboy hat. And I got the chills because I'd read so much about him. Sure. And let me also say I was very close to the mothers of these kids, which yes. was the ultimate in impetus for me to, to make the Certainly. movie. Certainly, absolutely. Um, so there he is, and I'm thinking, oh, God, can I go in there and, and do this? Well, I got in there, and uh, the, the, the lawyer says, you can't ask about the crime, you can't ask about the Klan, you can't ask about this, you can't ask about that. And I'm thinking, what the hell am I going to ask? You know? <laughs> what can I talk about? Right. So I get a two-hour interview with the man, and right. basically it was a two-hour for him to say, I'm innocent. You know I didn't do that. You know I'm really innocent. You know I'm innocent. Sure. And so I let him talk, and yes, I had footage of him, a lot of it, but 
I really felt it wasn't particularly valuable. Sure. Uh, because after spending five months with somebody, even somebody like him, I wanted some kind of humanity from the man. He is a human being. Um, and I worked really hard trying to find some common ground where he could feel something that three young men were killed, regardless why they were killed or if you have a difference in opinion. And the day that Carolyn Goodman testified, it was a very, and she was 88 at the time, okay, and it was a very emotional testimony. Certainly. And it, you know, it brought tears to everybody's eyes, yes. you know, watching her. So when I went back to his house that night, I'm thinking, okay, the man's gonna, he, he's a human, I know he is. I said, Edgar, can't you f feel sorry for a mother losing a child? Not so much why the child died or whatever, but just the fact that a mother could lose a child. Loss of life, absolutely. And his response to me was, well, they couldn't have loved him very much, and maybe if they were a good Christian family. Now, these were Jewish families. That was the hardest moment for me, and I remember holding That's on to that chair, moment, and, and I'm sitting as close to him wow. as I am to you, and I'm grabbing, and I could see that my knuckles are white, and right. I thought, don't let your face belie you, <laughs> because I wanted to say something. I'd wanted to say something all along, you know, but I knew if I had done that, I would have lost him. And so I just decided to keep my truth out of it, because I know my truth. Right. It was really getting at his, and since no one had ever gotten inside the head of one of these guys, it was really important. If you're really going to understand how this could have happened, you need to understand inside his head. Certainly. And so, you know, I'd, I'd go back to that hotel and take a shower quite a lot. <laughs> um, but it, it, it was something that, um, it was an experience that I'll, that I'll never forget. And, and I'm glad that I didn't jump all over him or yell at him. Uh, first of all, I wouldn't have gotten interviews. <laughs> right. Uh, but secondly, we now understand how kids can get killed and the complicity in terms of who did it. Now, yeah, the Klansmen physically went out and did the dirty work. But what we say in the film, they were pawns too. Now, pawns in the sense that if the rich white folks including the governor of the state of Mississippi, right. including the senator of the state of Mississippi, in terms of professional white people. If they didn't say, great job, Edgar, you did a great job, and they were protecting him from prosecution, Absolutely. then he was the hero. And so the film talks about the complicity, not just of the Klan's people. You know, they're just ignorant. Certainly. And hopefully, you know, we can change some of their opinions. Yes, Although, absolutely. when you see my film, you'll see that some of them are going to have to die <laughs> before that happens. <laughs> but we can educate, and we can educate young people by understanding how this could happen to make sure it never happens again. Right. And uh, we, we do have Barack Obama's president, and that's terrific. Uh, but he became president because those three boys died. And not just those three. Those three you only know about because two of them are white. Okay, there were hundreds and hundreds of black folks who were murdered in Mississippi, who disappeared or are missing, and nothing has ever been done about nothing it. Been done, right. And we do pay tribute to them in our film. Uh, because if those three kids were all black, and Mrs. Cheney says it in the film, they never would have found my son. Certainly. Um, before we go, is there an, a website where people can go to find out more about this movie and about your work as an activist? Yes, uh, the website is www.neshobafilm.com. And I don't have my own personal website, but if you Google me, you, you'll find about 40 pages there. Uh, one, one of these days, I'll get a website for myself. Okay. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's been amazing talking to you. It oh. sounds like this was, for lack of a better word, an amazing moment in time. Well, it took six years. And we funded it ourselves. Uh, we had no idea it was going to take that long and cost a quarter of a million dollars out of pocket and, and all those things that it did. But the fact that those two mothers got to testify at that trial and there was some reconciliation that it caused people to come together, blacks and whites, and say, you know what? We're more alike than we're different. Right. And we need to talk about what happened. It, it's like a wound that continues to fester, and it can fester for 40 years, but until you get that poison out, you're not going to heal. And, and what I hope the film is inspires communities, that p communities can get together and pe one person can make a difference. And we can make this world the world we know it can be. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you for coming in. Incredible to talk to you. Have a great time at the festival. Thank it's you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.